Well, friends, uh, it's very important that as we come to you right now, we have our Bibles open. That should always be the case in our lives. Because why would we do that? Why would we seek the consultation of the scriptures? Isn't this an ancient old book? Uh, what can it tell me? Well, this is a book, the book of God's word. And God's word speaks about the future. And what we're seeing right now in the world regarding Israel and all the things that are taking place, friends, this is such a critical time because it's so important to understand that as my good friend who is now in heaven, Dr. Ed Heinsohn, used to say, God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us. He gave us Bible prophecy to prepare us. And so many of you would say that maybe this is just another war, Jack, just calm down. Israel is always seemingly having uh, skirmishes with its neighbors and, and all of this. I understand that, but this is different. You see in the book of Ezekiel, it talks about that in the last days, the wars that were somewhat common, 1948, 1973, in the 80s, as Israel fought for its existence, you might just say, this is just another bout. And I'm saying to you today, it is not. And here's the reason why. From Bible prophecy, we know that this time it's involving nations. And I'm gonna be, uh, I'm sure, forgetting a few, but it used to be just a local skirmish, right? In this particular war, the US is involved, Turkey's involved, Russia's involved, Iran is involved, now Iraq is involved, Syria is involved, Lebanon is involved. Egypt is involved. And now, of all things, China, North Korea in a combo is breathing out threatenings of war against Taiwan and against the United States. What are we looking at? Is it possible that we're looking at the opening throes of a third world war? Are we already in it? It's gone beyond a local skirmish, my friends. And as I come to you from the United States, we're hearing warnings that the United States is gonna be targeted. Well, I take comfort in knowing that the Lord knows. And I find that in the scripture. So grab your Bibles, let's dive into this study as we open up the word of God and find out what could be next. Psalm 14, verse seven. On that, the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Israel, God is your Messiah. God is your salvation. By the way, that's true for everybody. But he started by revealing himself to Israel and he will finish by revealing himself to Israel. Genesis 22, 18. In your seed descendants. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Psalm 22 verse 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. That is interesting. All the ends of the world. That's non-Jews. Shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations shall worship before me. Before you, the Lord. Isaiah 49, verse 6. Indeed, he says, It is too small a thing that you should be my servant to rise up, raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore and uh, restore the preserved ones of Israel. Think about how, think, go after service today and find how many times Israel appears in your Bible or Palestine. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles, Jack, it says Jack right there in small print, <laughs> that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. They're going to fulfill that, by the way, during the seven-year tribulation period. They're going to fulfill that passage. The Jews will be a bunch of Billy Grahams and Paul the Apostles all wrapped up into one. Can you imagine? You're going to just, man, there's going to be Jews running around telling the world the good news of, that God saves. Can you imagine? Can you imagine can you imagine Paul the Apostle with the internet? <laughs> what if Paul the Apostle had a Twitter page? <laughs> Look what he did and he didn't have any of that. Isn't it amazing? The guy preached to the known world and he didn't have a plane. Can you imagine? Okay, here we go. Where are you going? I'm going to preach to the ends of the earth. <laughs> but that's what he did. 
Jesus never traveled more than 200 miles. Paul the Apostle, I forget the number, but it's in the thousands and thousands of miles. 2,000 years ago. (laughs) Daniel 7, verse 14. Then to him was given dominion. This is of the Messiah. and, And glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. This is what's coming, people, in the future. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall never pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall never be destroyed. That's the team I'm I'm playing for. Isaiah 60, Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but... The Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light. He's speaking about Israel. And kings to the brightness of your rising. God is doing a work. I know it looks horrible right now. And according to the Bible, according to the scriptures, there's terrible days ahead. But Israel will never cease to exist. God says so. Amos 9, 15 says, no matter what's going on in Israel, no matter how many people die, Israel will never again cease to be Israel. It may be brought under great attack, but it's never going to go away. Never. And Islam's got a huge disappointment coming. No, I'm not being funny. I believe God's going to use that to open up the eyes of Muslims. By the way, right now, listen, I've been on the phone all week. I've been talking to people in Israel. Listen, there are so many people, so many Jews that are talking now to their, Christ, their, their believing Jewish friends and family saying, tell us, tell us about Bible prophecy. Tell, listen, tell us about Yeshua. Tell us about, tell about, tell us again, tell us again. Jews are coming to Christ. Listen, Islam, I know it doesn't feel like it. Islam is losing converts. More Muslims are coming to Christ than any other time in history. God has a name. Yah is his name. Yahweh, salvation. Where's God in all these things? Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. Set themselves together against the Lord. There's his name, Yah. And against, whoop, what? Against his what? Whoop. Now listen, my Jewish friends, we got a problem now. This is King David talking to us. They take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed. The one anointed is the word also translated Messiah or deliverer, or we use the word Savior. Hmm. That implies in the Hebrew that the Lord is going to send to the earth first to Israel a Savior. Just from this psalm right here. Are you guys with me? Hmm. Well, let's go on. Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. That's what the crazies are saying. Well, verse 4, he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet, I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me. Okay, stop. The Lord is the same one that's in verse 2. And the me is the same one that is the anointed. Y'all get that? Mark it down. It's not hard. You are my son. Today I have begotten or glorified you. Ask of me. Who? The Lord. And I will give you, who? The anointed one, the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Just file that away, my friends. If you're a Muslim, if you're Jewish, or if you're a Christian and you're not sure what you believe, file that away. This is serious. Hosea 5.14. Hosea 5.14. I will be like a lion to Israel, like a strong young lion to Judah. I will tear them to pieces I will carry them off, and no one will be left to rescue them. This is God speaking. 
Then I will return to my place until they admit their guilt to me or, and turn to me. For as soon as trouble comes, they will earnestly search for me. That's being lived out right now. You ever heard of the Holocaust? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 talks about the Holocaust. It didn't have to happen. But guess what? God says, you don't want me? Then I'll leave you alone to the desires of the world. And I'm going to wait. I'll wait until you invite me back. Sound familiar, Christian? Jesus said, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. Listen, if Jesus was a religion, he would knock the door down. He's not a religion. You open the door. I have to finish this. What's possibly next? I am... I'm in a massive national pastor's thread, text thread. And I said, I just simply said, um, last Sunday, I said, well, now would be a good time to keep your eye on Damascus. And everybody said, what in the world are you talking about? And I said, you go read Isaiah 17 and Jeremiah 49, and uh, you tell me what's going on. And lo and behold, later this week, Israel had to bomb the runways of the airport at Damascus and Aleppo because Russia was flying in military arms to Tehran and then Tehran was flying them from Iran over to Damascus and Aleppo to supply Hezbollah weaponry. So Israel took out the runways so they couldn't continue to bring the armaments. Here's what's, listen, what does the Bible say about this? Listen, Damascus has been one of the longest, oldest, continuously inhabited cities in the world, in human existence. Damascus is one of the oldest inhabited cities in the world. It's been inhabited since its creation. Are you hearing me? It's never been abandoned. It's been attacked. It's been taken captive. But it's always had people there. So this is what I'm looking for. I wouldn't doubt at any time. Isaiah 17, 1, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city and it will be a ruinous heap. Jeremiah 49, 26 goes on to say about it. Therefore, her young men shall fall in the streets and all the men of war shall be cut off in that day, says the Lord of hosts. Here it is. I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. Ben-Hadad is the leadership. The word ruinous heap means uninhabitable. Boy, that ought to just get you pumped. We don't wish the demise of anything, but Bible prophecy will happen. What in the world was King David talking about when he said, you ready? Psalm 22, verse 16, for dogs, that's a word for Gentiles, have surrounded me. Notice capital M, it's speaking about deity. Somebody is speaking, and they're important. It's either the Lord or the anointed one. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. This is David. They pierced my hands and my feet. They never pierced David's hands in his feet. Just think for a moment. Who in history is famous for having their hands and their feet pierced? What in the world was the prophet Isaiah talking about when he said, Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Do you know what Emmanuel means? God is among us. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Who cares? Babies are born all the time. (laughs) Unto us a son is given. Wait, what are we talking about? Somebody donated a son. (laughs) What What do you mean? Well, let's find out. And the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. The word everlasting father is the one who governs time. The one that possesses and governs time, the prince of peace. Does that remind you of anybody? You guys, I'm reading from the Hebrew scriptures. What in the world was Moses thinking about 
When in Deuteronomy 18, 15, he said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren, him you shall hear. What does that mean? Moses is saying, someone's greater than I am is coming. Wow. Think that through. What in the world was Jeremiah talking about when he said, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them out of the land to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord, verse 33, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor, but every man his brother, saying, know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. Thus says the Lord who gives the sun for light by day, the listen, the ordinance of the moon and the stars for the light by night, who distributes the sea and its uh, waves roaring. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from me, says the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. In other words, it ain't going to happen. What in the world was Zechariah talking about? In 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just, having salvation, lowly or humble, and riding on a donkey, a colt, a foal of a donkey. What happened? What happened on Palm Sunday? Exactly that. What in the world was Micah, the prophet, talking about in Micah 5, verse 2? But you, O Bethlehem, Epaphratha, which is genius. There were two Bethlehems at the time of Christ's birth. Two different counties. Two na- t- same name, two different counties. You know, like we have Paris, and then there's Paris. Notice your Bible says Epaphratha. That means the one that is near Jerusalem. The one that has the tower of Migdal Eder, where the priests would approve the sacrificial lambs for the temple. Though you are little among the thousands of Judah, little villages everywhere, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting. Someone's going to be born in Bethlehem who is eternal. And here's where we end. Proverbs 30, verse 4, Solomon Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? And who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? His name is Yah. You know that by now. What is his son's name, if you know? I call this the everlasting Jew stopper. No, listen, I've used this on all of my Jewish friends. Some of the friends you know, they're famous. I've used this verse to them, and they go, let me check it in the Hebrew. Go right ahead. They go in the Hebrew. One guy, I was on a bus in Jerusalem. This guy goes to me, hmm, it's stronger in the Hebrew. The English is weak. Can you believe that? Every Jew I know, I always say, hey, read, read Proverbs 30, verse 4, and tell me what you think. Go ask your rabbi that one. Not one has ever come back to me yet. What is my name? It's Yah, Yahweh, Yehovah. We already know this. And then he turns right around and says, can you tell me my son's name? It's the same one that's in Psalm 2. 
Isaiah 7, Isaiah 9, on and on we go. He who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Keep your eyes on the news, maybe, if you can handle it. But by all means, have your Bibles open. So friends, here's the big takeaway. Please, number one, first of all, don't panic. Don't worry. You want to have your Bible open. You want to have the news open. And you want to judge what you're hearing from the world, from various sources. You should always have various news sources. But all of it should be filtered through the reality and the truth of God's Word. Bible open, news on, as much as that's distasteful, the last thing you want to do, friend, is bury your head in the sand. That's not good. God commended the sons of Ishakar by saying that they knew because they had a grip of the signs and the times of the season what Israel should do next. Well, God would have us to do the exact same thing. We should have our Bibles open so that we're seeking the word and looking around for what reason? Number one, making sure that our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ and we're trusting God. But number two, after that's settled in your life, and I speak to many Christians right now, maybe not all of you are Christians, but you should be. In light of Bible prophecy, in light of what's unfolding in the world around us, this is the time for you and I to speak up. This is the time where I want to encourage you to take what's in the Bible and tell your friends and family, tell your neighbors. Friends, listen, if you name the name of Jesus as I do, then it's not an option for me to sit silent. I must bring people the hope of God. It doesn't matter if they're Jewish, atheist, Muslim, uh, Hindu, uh, it doesn't matter. Everyone needs to know the love of God that comes through Jesus Christ. That's why there's a book called the Bible that announced in advance Jesus would go to the cross. Jesus would die on that cross for our sins. Jesus would be resurrected from the dead. My friend, listen, it's Jesus Christ. That's why here at Real Life, we want to keep you connected to Jesus. And you can simply go to jackhibbs.com and find out so much more. You can connect with us there on Facebook and Instagram, Telegram, so many other avenues where we can stay up to date on what's going on. So until next time, friends, we hope that you grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. You are watching Real Life with Jack Hibbs. Like food that nourishes the body, the Bible should be consumed each and every day to feed the spirit. Try this amazing tool for daily spiritual growth, the One Year Bible. Here's what Pastor Jack has to say about it. Hey friends, for 30 years now, our church has gone through the Bible one time every year through the One Year Bible. In fact, this is not only a great thing for you, it's a great gift for you to give to another. The Word of God, through the Bible in a year, your faith will grow and you'll see God's Word come alive in your life. Please get a copy for yourself, the One Year Bible. Receive a copy of the One Year Bible when you give a gift of any amount to the Ministry of Real Life. Donate today and then purchase a second copy to give to someone you love. Go to jackhibbs.com or call 877-777-2346. Get your copies in time for Christmas by ordering today, while supplies last. Life is full of fear, doubt, and worry. The more you listen to and see the world today, the easier it is to feel hopeless and helpless. Amidst the confusion, a voice of hope has emerged. The Real Life Network. Founded by Jack Hibbs, the Real Life Network is a free digital media platform, void of the noise of secular media that attack people of faith. Click on the QR code or sign up for free at reallifenetwork.com. Fast forward your faith. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effect. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history. 
which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. And there you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life.